Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Josh's Frogs. Uh, I'm a reptile keeper here. My name's Brandon. And I am back here to talk to you guys about our termite hill geckos, that are scientific name being Hemidactylus tritris. This is a temperate arid species, but airing a little bit more towards temperate than maybe something like your leopard geckos that you got at home. Uh, these guys are found in the, in the southern regions of Asia, uh, in Sri Lanka and in India, Pakistan, that sort of area. Um, and they're gonna be found not so much in your sandy, rocky deserts, but more so your temperate forests and that sort of thing. So you're not gonna be keeping them like you would, you know, a morning gecko or a day gecko, but you're definitely gonna want them to be a little bit on the wetter side than your more desert-born species. So, all that still said, I would still highly recommend using our Dutch's Frogs desert bio bedding. Uh, this stuff is chock full of all sorts of lovely things, activated charcoal, sphagnum moss. That's really going to help develop a healthy uh, bacteria culture inside of there. That's going to help aerate your soil and break down all the bits of poo and stuff that you don't manage to find. Um, as will our dwarf tropical iso white isopods and temperate springtails, uh, which you will also include in this, especially if you're doing a desert bioactive setup, uh, you will also include those in there because those will also help out with that. Uh, still got to spot clean a little bit because it's not a foolproof method and Little critters and stuff are not a stand-in for not cleaning your tank. So let's crack into this bag. And when you're going and setting up a desert bioactive setup, what you're going to want to do is cut a larger hole in your bag. There we go. And you're gonna wanna pour in at first about a half inch to an inch layer and get that all nice and mixed up. And then for this bottom layer of substrate, what you're gonna wanna do is thoroughly soak through all this substrate. So, I'm gonna go through and have a nice bottle of RO water or dechlorinated uh, tap water, which we also sell products in order to dechlorinate your tap water as you're working with your animals. Um, and you're gonna wanna thoroughly soak through all of your desert bio substrate. Uh, you're not going to want to be able to like squeeze water out of it but it should all take on this sort of dark chocolate cover and it should be, you know, damp to the touch. Um, and that's where all of your bacteria and good stuff's gonna foster in, as well as your springtails and isopods and all that stuff. Um, and then in order to make sure that your new temperate friend is in a drier setup, you're gonna put in another about half inch or inch layer um, of completely dry substrate. So once everything's all said and done, what you'll have once you're done setting up your tank is about halfway, you'll have a really clear line, the bottom layer of more damp uh, substrate, and then you'll have a top layer of drier substrate that you allow to dry out between mistings. Let's talk about mistings for these guys. As I alluded to earlier, they are a uh, more of a temperate species than an arid species. These guys like it a little bit more humid in the air at about 50 to 60% ambient humidity. Uh, so what that's going to look like care-wise is in addition to the dry uh, desert bio bedding, you're gonna include a nice layer of, these are oak leaves, but any sort of leaf litter layer 
will work. And this will, the desert bio bedding is designed to dry out between mistings, but this will trap it in there for longer and get nice little humid pockets for your friend to find. You're going to want to mist your enclosure about three times a week. And for this, you're going to want to mist all around. And again, this, this substrate will dry out between misting. What we're doing here is trying to get the water that you spray into here uh, stay inside the enclosure for just a little bit longer than the desert bio bedding normally does for species where you don't include a leaf layer in. Um, and of course, since we are doing a bioactive setup, this is the perfect time to introduce live plants. Um, the substrate does get pretty dry and the substrate does get pretty dry. So things that like it a little bit more humid on the wet side probably still aren't going to do great in here, but more wet tolerant desert species, as well as things that are basically impossible to kill like pothos will do great inside of these enclosures. And we highly recommend doing so because it's, uh, it's good for the soil health and it's a nice bit of enrichment for your animal. Um, I also recommend for this species, including a nice humid box. So something like a plastic solo cup or sterilite bin with a nice bit of uh, damp sphagnum moss in there will help create a nice humid pocket of about 99% uh, humidity. That will help with any potential shedding issues that you might occur, uh, but shouldn't if you're misting it as you should be. Um, these guys are a ground gecko primarily and as, as such, mostly spend their time climbing up small shrubs and going underneath bits of tree bark and leaves and all that kind of stuff. So you'll want to include a copious amount of opportunities for him to really kind of wedge himself in and feel secure. So an ample amount of cork bark is, is very highly recommended, but as well uh, creating various levels of elevation for him. Again, feeling all contact around all points of its body makes it feel, makes it helps make it feel very secure. Uh, they will engage in a little bit of digging as well. So don't be afraid that before you toss your leaf litter in to maybe nudge your cork bark into the substrate itself in order to encourage that natural behavior. Let's talk about lighting. UVB is not a requirement as this is a nocturnal species. However, low levels of UVB are basically beneficial for all reptiles. Um, we have a full selection of lower uh, UVB output uh, bulbs online that would be great for a uh, termite hill gecko setup. Again, you don't necessarily have to include it, but your animal will appreciate it if you do. Uh, temperature wise, let's throw the screen top back on here so we can start tossing some lighting up here. Uh, these guys do very much require a thermal gradient. Uh, their cool side will be just fine at ambient room temperature as long as your house isn't getting too cold. They do require a hot spot of, 80, of at least 85 degrees, not more than 90. I highly recommend accomplishing this with Zilla's uh, mini halogen lighting setup. Uh, this is a small little 50 watt bulb. Pop this guy open. Uh, when you go and toss your halogen bulb inside of one of these little light fixtures, you're going to want to handle the bulb itself with some sort of cloth or handle it with a pair of gloves on or something like that because making direct contact with the actual bulb itself with your skin creates imperfections that will slightly shorten the length of your bulb. Get it off. I'm just gonna toss that guy up there and then we're gonna plug him in. So between the nice 85 degree hotspot, which you can 
probe with a thermometer hygrometer like this, or and or you can heat gun a product like that. Uh, however you're doing it, uh, just make sure that you're taking your temps into your humidities and making sure everything's up to snuff. With all that all the way, let's get to the gecko itself. Termite hill geckos are a little bit nervous, a little bit flighty, as you can see right there. He is just rip roaring, ready to try and get away from me. But with a bit of patience and a gentle hand, you can eventually coax him on your hand. Yeah, uh, these guys are very nervous and flighty. Uh, as you can see, if you're moving super slow and methodical and you're not trying to restrict the animal in any way, it should pretty much try to sit there and try and convince you that it's a bump on the log and can be handled. I wouldn't handle them more than once a week at the very most. Primarily, if you need to get in there and do care and stuff, this is definitely more of a look at animal than something you're gonna watch Netflix with. Definitely wouldn't recommend handling these guys for more than one week. Uh, definitely wouldn't recommend handling these guys more than once a week. Uh, not, definitely not more than 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, definitely a nervous little fellow, but again, very pretty. Um, it's a nocturnal species, so you won't see them much during the day, but you can definitely catch them uh, once you hit the once you hit the hay. Um, these guys are going to eat your standard array of feeder bugs, things like crickets, mealworms, uh, dubia roaches, all appropriately sized, of course. All right, and that has been setting up uh, Hemidectylus tridris, your termite hill geckos. Take care. Thanks so much for watching this video. Here at Josh's Frogs, bringing nature to your doorstep is more than just our mission, it's our passion. We want you to have the most successful experience possible, so we're going to be here for you before, during, and after your purchase. Whether that's with our captive bred animals, plants, insects, or the wide variety of their care products on our website. You always have access to our dedicated customer service team, on-site nature experts, hundreds of free articles via our blog, and many more videos right here on our YouTube channel. So be sure to subscribe. We're always happy to help. Just shoot us an email or give us a call. You can find all of this information and more at joshesfrogs.com. Thanks again and see you next time.